But if I'd broken my arm, it would have been better because people could see it. But I have a mental illness. I was working in a very high pressure job and we had moved to a different part of the country where we knew no one. We had no support network. I kept pushing through and pushing through and pushing through because I was literally the only person in the company who could do a major project. So everything was relying on me. It all just came too much. And one day I was working at home and I literally broke. I was on the phone to a colleague at the time. He put the phone down as quickly as he could and phoned my boss. My boss rang me and it was already too late. All I wanted to do was hide in a corner and cry. In 2006, my son was born. I was 22 years old. I then, when he became a week old, I was then diagnosed with very, very severe postnatal depression. I didn't know what this was. I'd never heard of postnatal depression. It wasn't talked about when I was pregnant. It wasn't talked about during my antenatal classes. It wasn't talked about after I gave birth. It just wasn't talked about. I suffered horrifically with postnatal depression for the first two and a half years of my son's life. I thought I was a bad mother. I thought he'd be better off without me. I thought I couldn't do it. I didn't want to harm him, but I did want to put him in his bassinet at two weeks old, walk away and never come back because I truly believed my son would be better off without me and would have a better life with his dad than he would with me. I learnt at the age of seven how to build a wall and not show anybody how I was really feeling. Went through a lot of bullying obviously and not wanting to be here because everything was too tough back then. My biggest escape would be music, chucking music on and just driving. Um, anything to help me escape what I'm going through. Live gigs, obviously the biggest one. I can pretend I'm not there and just escape the world. A lot of friends don't know how to react, so they just tend to shut away, not talk to me not do the, hey, how are you doing? I get told I've got attitude and basically don't sleep. I felt like it made me weak and I didn't want other people to think differently of me. I didn't want to change their perception of me. Um, if I spoke about anxiety or depression or having any sort of mental health issue, what were they going to think of me? How was it going to change their opinion? Uh, what would my mom think? What would my family think? I can remember it through my teen years. Uh, I can remember the constant anxiety of performing well, whether it be at school or sport or music or acting or anything in the way that that would affect me. But yet I was worried to ever acknowledge any of that because, you know, I was this happy kid and, and I liked doing these things. Uh, there's a lot that sort of weighs on my shoulders as far as organisation goes within all of the things that I do. And I can feel when those start to weigh too heavily and when I start to feel like there's too much happening and I feel it all like an actual physical weight upon me. I feel like that everything becomes dark and I can sort of feel when I'm on the verge of this kind of breakdown. And yeah, actually, this is when I should be able to turn around and say to my family, oh, I, I'm struggling right now. And yet I still find that incredibly difficult. So when that kicks in, that's when the anxiety starts and then I become constantly anxious about everything that's going on to the point that I then can't function anymore. Everything becomes too much. And then because of that, the depression kicks in because I become angry 
and I become irritable towards my family and I don't want to be that. Shit, I'm probably that right now, to be perfectly honest. So I live with chronic pain and illness. Um, my illnesses are invisible. I also deal with um, anxiety. Um, I, I, just, I find it extremely hard. I have days where things are so dark, I don't even know how I'm going to get out of the hole. I've lost friends, I've lost family. They just don't understand. They don't understand a bad day to me can mean what, the end of my world. I've grown up being the fat chick with a skin condition and continuously got bullied. I faced the harsh reality of pain medication and addiction and the battle to overcome it. I've also dealt with prenatal and postnatal depression. My mental health got challenged big time when my life and everything I knew completely fell apart around me. Nine years ago when my relationship ended, I had no choice but to start everything. My depression and anxiety were at peak level. I had no choice but to go on antidepressants and see a psychologist frequently. Uh, I would say that I struggled for the better part of 25 years with major depression and um, come to realize that I also uh, have complex PTSD from the long-term abuse of my mother and just undealt with uh, issues from my past. I struggled a lot in my adolescent years uh, with bullying and at one point was held upside down in a headlock, being choked until I passed out. That was very scarring for me. I thought I was going to die back then. And uh, for a large part of my life, I wish I would have. So my struggle a lot of times has been with being, being invisible or feeling invisible to those around me. Um, you know, when you grow up in that environment where you're constantly alone, a lot of the times that settles in later in life as well, and that happened to me. I was very withdrawn, I was very isolated, and I felt very misunderstood. When my grandmother passed away when I was 13, which really hit me hard because her and I were really, really close and she was the person who I could go through and talk to her about anything. Um, and I was at the point of talking to her about stuff that had happened to me a few years prior and then everything happened with her um, passing away. And long story short, really, um, my life from then really turned to hell. I went up and down through lots of emotions and roller coasters through numerous attempts with suicide via overdosing. I've even tried to hang myself. Uh, one of my closest friends took his life and that's kind of when the cracks really started to show in everybody, not just in myself. I noticed other people suffering too, but as a 15 year old kid, it was it was hard to talk about. Um, as I got older, I couldn't really shake all the, thing, all the things that people told me I was as a kid. And it really started to settle in to the point where I really, I really believed it. I didn't want to stand out. I didn't want to get noticed. I just wanted to blend into the background. And the only way I could control that was through my physical appearance. By the time I was 23 years old, I was 45 kgs. I was literally dying to fit in. Uh, by that point, uh, it was physically impossible to hide what was going on. And for the longest time, I was terrified to speak up. Uh, losing a friend to suicide, you can definitely gain a perspective on how people view mental illness. Uh, most people are understanding they've been through it, they know someone who's been through it. But sadly, you do hear a lot of negatives to people who don't understand, they don't get it. Uh, they see it as a weakness. I thought maybe I was just weak, 
I needed to bite the bullet and just get on with it. Stepfather was given full custody of me. And ages three to 12, he would beat me. And I hadn't known my real mother. I didn't know my real father. Um, and I still remember the last day I went into school. I had gone in, like, I think I went once on in second grade. I asked the nurse for an aspirin because I had a headache. And she was like, oh, why? And I was like, well, my, my daddy hit me. And I didn't think it was a big deal. I thought it was normal. You know, I was bad. I got hit. Like, whatever. So it started from there. And my family got mad at me. And I didn't know why anyone was mad at me. Sorry. Sometimes it still gets hard to talk about. Um, it just sucks being 12 and making a plan to survive and escape such a bad environment. It fucks you up. What are you thinking as you look up at the stars? Are you trying to figure out how it turned down this way? Remembering things play out so close and yet so far And holding on to yesterday Shouldn't need a song to save your life The world should care enough for you to feel like you belong right here But we all know that that's not right So sing this song and know that someone out there cares And this is not the end if it was, it would be okay And broken hearts can mend And I promise help is not a million miles away What are you thinking as you look up at the stars? Are you wondering? Would they notice if there was one not there? Trying to remember a time when things were not so hard And you were not so scared You shouldn't need a song to save your life The world should care enough for you to feel like you That's not right So sing this song You know that someone out there cares And this is not the end Cause if it was it would be all okay And broken hearts can mend And I promise how it's not a million miles away What are you thinking as you look up at the stars? Are you counting your lucky ones? The things turned out this way I am. 
I've come out stronger because of it. And I'm proud of that. I'm proud of every scar I have, both physically and mentally, because it takes all those to make me the person that I am. Feeling like an outcast and then finding out that, you know, you're not alone, you're not an outcast, you know, the feelings you have are normal. Over the years, I learned to love myself and to love who I am and who I've become, and I'm proud of that. But I can't take all the credit. Music was a big, big influence in that. If you think your mates don't want to hear from you, please just put out a hand, give them a shout, just say, hey, I'm here for you. You might not know what to say to them, but just say, hey, Um, give them a call because you never know, you could really, honestly, be the best thing they hear from in that day. These demons will always linger, and of course, some days will be harder. But finding ways to cope is important, and being sure they're healthy ways to cope. So now every week I go touch base with nature and listen to music and set all my demons free. But there's always going to be people there that you can go to, to talk to about those problems. But I find it hard to approach people to do that. And that's another thing I need to work on. And I am trying to work on that and that's my next goal is to know that I have those people there that I can go to if I need to and know who I can reach out to when I can reach out to them and know that they will listen. So my story is meant not only as an encouragement but also as a battle cry. I think that there are many people who are of many prominent people, singers, actors, uh, authors that are beginning to speak up louder and, and with more force to not only identify mental health as an area of struggle, but also their demons. I hope that one day soon that there will be thousands of us that rise up and rise against the chains and really move mountains for mental health and for people who feel like I did, who feel alone, who feel like there's just no one out there who cares. And one day I hope that I could meet you, the listener of my story, and that you would give me a hug and say, it's because of you that I survived. It's because of you that I didn't give up. My life's been so tipped upside down and it's put me on a path to teach others that it's it's okay to have a bad day. You know, it's not the end of all, but how do you work through that bad day? Uh, music was always a coping mechanism for me. My parents never really understood why I listened to such depressing music but for me it made me feel normal to know that these feelings that I had other people had them too and that's okay. Every day is a blessing and a new opportunity and I think it's really important for people to know that you, sh- you can never be afraid to speak up. Nine times out of ten, people will show you the best in them. And those few that do are the other ones that will be there to support you through. I know I'm never going to be better, but I also know it's not my fault. It is what it is. I do what I can, and I talk about it. My friends know, my family knows, my bosses know. It's something that I've never tried to hide. And consequently, I recognize it in others. But you need to understand, it's not your fault. 
you need to understand lots of people around you suffer the same. And it's okay. You need to talk about it. You need to get the help you need and then just get on with life. If you had a broken arm, people would see that you had it in a sling and a plaster cast and people would know and they would make allowances for that. People don't understand mental illness because it's hidden and it's dangerous because it's hidden. But talk to people, get it out there, understand your own triggers, which will be different for everybody, and just know you can get through this. We all get through this. And those of us who've had it for a while understand we need to get through this every single day. But that's okay. And you're going to be all right. Things are hard. Life is hard. It's okay not to be okay. And it's okay to always ask for help. And believe it or not, when you want to think the world is better off without you, the world is not better off without you. The world is better with you in it. I find music helps listening to certain songs, watching a certain TV show, doing certain things. It always, always helps. The biggest thing recently has been learning how to talk about these things and learning how to acknowledge that they're normal, that you're allowed to feel this way, and that it won't change people's perception of me. I think when we first announced the Collab Project and we posted the video and uh, I'd spoken on various other platforms about my experience uh, with mental health and experience with, with mental health as a musician, I was so terrified, like, what are my neighbors going to think? What's my mom going to say? What's the rest of my family going to say? But every single one of them has come to talk to me about how proud they are of what we're doing. No one thinks that I'm weaker. No one thinks differently or lesser of me this completely wrong perception of what people would think of these things for so long. And I think this is what the Collab Project's all about. We gotta change those perceptions. You'll be surprised at the reactions you'll get.